All right, guys, we are back again with another episode of The Masochist. A shout out to Simo and Hossman. They both invented this series. Uh, but first, do you want to make your Master Duel experience a lot better? Are you ready to take your Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Play experience to a new level? The Untapped GG Companion is here for you. Use the deck tracker to know exactly what cards you have in your deck and to go over any cards you aren't familiar with yet by hovering over them. It instantly updates when you draw a card and automatically hides if you check your extra deck or graveyard. This is the perfect tool to help you master a new deck. The Untapped GG Companion also lets you import decks directly into the game in seconds. Copy any YDK or YDKE deck string, create a new deck in game, click the Start Auto Import button, and let us take the wheel. Once the duel is over, check your win rate on your personal stats page. Brag among your friends and share your decks so they can import them into the game too. Start your path to master today by downloading the Untapped GG Companion at ygom.untapped.gg. All right, so we're back. We've got a few different decks. We got a lot of new cards to go over. It's actually kind of incredible. Our deck just keeps getting better and better and better and better. Uh, we have Crackdown. I've added since the last episode Gagaga Magician to our deck, uh, just because uh, this card can essentially make any rank anything. Like if we have a level five, it'll make a rank five. A level one, it'll make a uh, rank one. Like it'll make any rank that we need to. We just can't use it as synchro material. And then I've also added. Uh, there was another dude in here that I added. I took out Karaz because he was just frustrating me. Um, and then I added something else. I added Brotar. Brotar seems like a crazy card. It can basically search anything and it special summons itself. And it can make the Lyra Lusk if we have the Gagaga -ga or this plus this can make Lyra Lusk, uh, the Lyra Lusk monster. Uh, so I'm going to give him a try. And he, his effect is generally kind of crazy because he can basically search essentially any card in Yu-Gi-Oh! But he can search any Dark Dragon, which can search, uh, for our purposes, Vice Dragon. Or it can search the uh, Bistial Luber, so Or it can search the Iron Dragon. So we can search all three of these with the... Uh, uh, Omni Dragon Brotar. We'll give him a try. There's a lot of other cards that I pulled that I like really really want to end up playing I never figured out what to do with small world. Somebody told me they can I can search Vijom, but like we literally have a searcher for Vijom. Um, so I don't know if that's totally necessary. We could search a barrier statue We could get something, you know, we could we could that could be something if we could search barrier statue I think I think we could get something going. Uh, there's still so many cards that I want to pull so let's 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 go play all right, for those of you wondering, we are in gold three. It is very lackluster. I'm not going to lie. This hand is very lackluster. I'm going to summon the Rocks Rose Dragon, activate, search, and then set power frame, and that's it. This hand is kind of iffy. Uh, it's not like the worst hand in the world, but it's not the best either, right? We have the Rocks Rose. When it gets destroyed, it'll just go to graveyard. But if this gets destroyed, we get some recursion. And then we've got this for protection, I guess. Yep, yes, Harpy's Feather Dust or nothing. We can really do about that. Our one card. He's playing Nordics. Honestly, I don't think we're going to beat this. Uh, just because he's about to summon a, a 4,000 attack monster with the Link 1. And then we just lose. He's going to, yeah, he's going to go into the Link 1, special summon 3 tuners. And, uh,. He's going to summon Loki, Thor, or Odin. And that's going to be tough for us to to deal with. Cause it's not that they're like great or anything, but... I mean, I guess he does banish his whole hand and he just gets one monster. It's not the end of the world. I guess we'll have to see what he summons. Which one? He probably will summon Loki because Loki's the best one. Banish three cards. Potters of Inquisitiveness, the new guy. Oh, this is like a skill drain, I think. That's what that does. Yeah, this card's like skill drain. Yeah, if you control an Acer monster, negate all cards your opponent controls. You just summon Odin rather than uh, the Loki. Loki used to be the best one. And then this guy can be unaffected by spawn trap cards until the end of the turn, which is just his turn. And he's set before the battle phase, so if we had uh, evenly matched, I'm going to go ahead and set this. Uh, let's see, yeah, we're going to go ahead and activate this. I'm going to target itself, and then I'm going to discard Curse of a Dragon. And I'm going to add 
I think I'm going to add the Iron Dragon. If we draw a Spell or Trap card. But then again, he has this thing to out it anyway. Which is frustrating. I should have summoned this dude over here. But... Um... Vice Dragon doesn't really do anything. Luber doesn't do anything. I think I think the Iron Dragon is probably best. He'll at least give us some some cards to play around. But he's a quick effect too, which is kind of cool, so we can activate him anytime. Alright. Expendable die. Alright, let's let's try to. There's this card here. We can definitely put three cards in a column. This gives it protection, right? Or, so we can't target any of his... Uh, we can't target Acer monsters with card effects. Okay. And this can't be targeted for attacks. So we have to get rid of this first. Yeah, so we can't attack that. Okay, okay, okay. This is, there's a lot to do here, but it's not going to be easy. I'm going to try my best. I'm going to summon this right here. I know this is the trap card that negates stuff, so let me go read that real quick. The one that he searched. Uh, let me find it. Okay, so you can actually bring back his Acer monster too, which kind of sucks. But I mean, I guess we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do our best to uh, make things happen. I'm going to activate the Iron Dragon. He can't negate the Iron Dragon since it's in hand. But he can negate the on-field effect right now if he wants to. Which kind of sucks for us, but there's nothing we can really do. Now we can make this guy, which this guy searches Curse of Dragon, but we always draw it anyway, so we can't really search it. We can go to the Sioux ship, but the Sioux ship can only attack the uh, Odin right now. It can't attack this. Um, and this thing can negate... The effects of all face-up cards your opponent controls. So, essentially, we've lost the duel. There is nothing that we can do. Uh, I, you know, losing to that kind of sucks, but I mean that's the kind of that's the kind of deck that you would expect in gold and silver. All right, we just won the coin flip. We chose to go first. We drew the Curse of Dragon and we drew the Amazon. It's Queen two bricks. We always draw him. He's you he might as well just, we might as well start the duel with him in our hand. Uh, we're going to summon the Heratic Dragon, at, uh, whatever his name is, Est. And then we're just going to set the There Can Only Be One. And we're going to set the Expendable Die just in case we draw. I should hold, like, I th theoretically I can hold it, but I can also just, like, set it just in case. Uh, because if I set it I uh, and I draw a Warrior, I can go on offense immediately, like I always say. He's going to add a Labyrinth card. This is already off to a bad start because now if he activates a Trap card. Uh, but I'm going to, before the end phase even happens, I'm going to... Uh, yeah, before the end phase even happens, I'm going to go ahead and Cuckoo Clock. That's not good. So now, I'm going to turn Chaining on and as quick as possible, I'm going to activate the Can Only Be One. If it allows me to because the fact that he set a Cuckoo Clock is really not good. Actually, you know what? He doesn't have the Labyrinth Field Spell on the field. Until he does, if he sets the Labyrinth Field Spell, then we're activating the There Can Only Be One. Alright, he's going to set the Welcome Labyrinth. That's fine. If he activates the Welcome Labyrinth, I'm going to activate There Can Only Be One. Yeah, I want him to waste the Cuckoo Clock, and I want him to waste the, la the Labyrinth. I want him to waste both. Because he's already... Yep, yeah, now I do it. Okay, now I will do it. I will activate the There Can Only Be One. Normally, I would scoop this matchup, but this actually isn't even like... A terrible hand right now because we get to stop the the welcome labyrinth because he already has a fiend on the field and uh we have him waste his cuckoo clock so he goes like minus two and now he just has to pass now it does suck that we lose the monster but i mean like we have to protect our life points i i suppose i could have just left you know the ward empty but it's whatever okay that's not terrible that's not terrible. Uh, he doesn't do any damage. Yeah. Opponent takes no battle damage. So even if we set him, 
I don't want to, I'm not going to attack into this, so I'm not going to attack into this because then he can just activate a Welcome Labyrinth or whatever the hell he has down here, or Big Welcome Labyrinth, and then he's going to be able to go into the big monster, and then he's going to be able to out, or there can only be one. So until we have, like, a serviceable play, I'm just going to leave this in defense mode and wait. Oh, right, yep, he just attacked, couldn't do anything, evenly matched. I'm going to go ahead and banish the... Expendable die because this is protecting our life points and this is winning us the game at this moment. End phase, that's fine. Twister isn't a bad card at all against Labyrinth because it can pop their field spell. This actually isn't a bad effect. I never even realized this effect. We can banish a dragon monster from the graveyard. This card gains attack and defense equal to the attack. Of that monster. That's actually kind of cool. I never even realized that effect was on there. Or I never got to use it at least. I think I'm going to tribute set the Amazonist Queen. Because. Actually if I. If I tribute. Summon the Amazonist Queen. It can attack twice. But as of right now that doesn't really benefit us. So I'm going to just go ahead and set the twister. And I'm going to end here. Because unfortunately, we just don't have uh, we don't have game on board, and if we need to attack over his monsters, because we like I said, we don't want him to get to the other labyrinth stuff. We don't want him to get to the the labyrinth, um, the really good labyrinth monsters. So if we just keep him on this one fiend stuck here right now, that's probably be better for us. And if I tribute some the Amazonist Queen, then I don't get the benefit of getting to attack twice with it. All right, like I said, he end phases here. You definitely don't want to activate the twister. Power frame's not bad, actually. So we're just going to keep building up resources, setting stuff. Until we get to really do something. Like I said, the Amazonist Queen is really not, not bad. Because, like I said, Amazonist Queen plus Primordial is a monster that can't be destroyed by battle. that can attack twice per battle phase. Which is really not bad. But the problem is, what's scary here is that he's building up resources. This this ba this duel has should not have gone this long. I think what we're waiting for here is the barrier statue. If we draw the barrier statue, I think we're we can we can make things happen here. I can set that, but I don't really know what that really helps us do. I'm just gonna keep ending. We're really what we're waiting for is the barrier statue. If we get the barrier statue, I think we make a move here. We win because then we have the there can only be one and the barrier statue holding shit down. Um, threatening war doesn't help. Yeah, it has to be the barrier statue specifically maybe crackdown might help yeah barrier statue please nope not yet like i said i don't want to go on offense until i need to threatening roar isn't bad either we're running low on spawn trap card zone so i'm just gonna leave that what he can do is he can tribute set by tributing these two which would be kind of scary for us Right, I'm going to go ahead and set this Rock's Rose Dragon. Might as well put it in the graveyard. If we draw one of the other ones later, we can trigger its effect. As long as this guy actually doesn't play back row removal, we might like legitimately just win this duel. Like If he doesn't have an out to there, it can only be one. This duel is pretty much over. Right, Max C is interesting. Ash Blossom, Max C, and that thing. It's like the three, the three, the three little ones. I mean, that does make a level 9. He could make it. If he has a Trishula, that's crazy. Yeah, if he has a Trishula, that just kind of sucks for us. But Deco Talker, that is really, really, really random. And now he can some activate the big Welcome Labyrinth, which sucks for us. I mean, like, again, we don't really... There's nothing we really could have done here. Uh, because eventually he was going to get to what he needed to get to. Like, some of the lovely castle silver castle but he has to return it to the hand or i guess deco talker and then he can activate the effect of the lovely to destroy a card yeah eventually he was going to out it nothing we could really do there like there's there's really nothing in terms of plays that we could really have done to destroy a card in our hand instead of there can only be one fine by me totally fine by me act and we actually have the out to the lovely anyway and he can reset a normal trap. I guess he could reset the big welcome labyrinth. Yeah. Which is, again, fine. 
Google Clock. Let's see what he activates. What he gets to use. Eradicator, Epidemic Virus, probably all traps. And then in our hand, he's going to destroy a trap card. Alright, if we draw a barrier statue, I think that, that does it for us. But if we don't, we basically lose. That just gets destroyed. Honestly, this game's over. That sucks, man. We just didn't, I mean, we just didn't draw, you can't, like, do anything. Like, you can't get aggressive, because if you destroy the monster, then they just summon more fiends. If you don't destroy the monster, then, uh, you just buy yourself some time. Like, either way, we were just gonna kind of lose that one. It is a fully constructed deck. Alright, let's see what we get. We chose to go first. Uh, our hand isn't bad at all. We have the barrier statue, and that's good enough, right? Uh, we have the barrier statue, and we have the Dragoodies, which protects the barrier statue. And then we have the cubic ascension and we have the amazement which is all really really good so let's see let's see how it goes i think our barrier statue actually funny enough survives this uh be between the dragoodies and the amazement thrill ride of course he just draws the harpy's feather us to the one of in a uh 36 what is that 30 in a 45 card deck he draws the one of i mean it's gonna happen right what can you do Let's see, it just depends on what he has next. Uh, depending on what he's playing, we might get out of here. Again, there's nothing I can really do. I have to, like, kind of play aggressive. I have to set everything, because if I don't set everything, uh, we just kind of, uh, we just kind of lose. And this only triggers when it's summit, when it's destroyed in the monster zone. Yeah. We can, we can add things, but if it's destroyed in the pendulum zone, we can't, uh, we can't add. Which is weird, I've never seen that on a pendulum card. But you can only add if it's from the monster zone. Now, hopefully he's playing Kashtira. In which case, he essentially may not have any normal summons. Which, if that's the case, we might win. If he has Pearly, this might be a good thing. Uh, if he doesn't have certain cards to negate my monsters. But it seems like he's in some sort of state of shock. Forbidden Droplets, Royal Rare. Into the Ruffian, Rail Car. Harpy's Feather Uster into Forbidden Droplets, onto my Barrier Statue, into the Pegasus. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure we're getting OTK'd here. I mean, I, I have no follow-up. It doesn't even matter. I just, I just have no follow-up. It's over. And that just sucks. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Today's been kind of a rough one. Like, I wouldn't even say meta decks, really, but just like fully constructed decks. Which obviously are going to be kind of tough to beat because we are playing kind of a scramble of random things. Uh, we just got to be realistic. Uh, now he's got a Chinese name and a, and a rabbit mate and he's got the generic thing going on. He chose to go first. This could be self DK or this could just be FTK. FTK or self DK. It just, it's, it's kind of a coin flip right now. But we'll see which one it is. Uh, I'm recording at night. I've started to realize whenever I record at night time... The, the decks I play against are significantly better than the decks I play against during the day. So we are playing against self DK. But during the day, I'll get like starter decks, Dark Magician, people trying to like screw around with the, like random archetypes. But if I play at night, I play like straight like, like for the most part, like tier 3 stuff uh, or above. It's like tier 3 or above. But here, obviously, you're playing self DK. So it's going to be a free, a free win. So let me just kind of fast forward until we win. All right, this should wrap it up. We we uh, pretty easy game against self DK as always, and we managed to summon synchro summon, and we managed to exceed summon. So we're getting closer to finishing those academic things. Let's see, we rank up to gold two. Wow, we're about to get into platinum, which I'm not excited about. Uh, let's see what we got. Dark fire soldier, 1700 attack. I, I would have played this on episode one. Uh, Dark Witch. This this card actually has a huge role in the anime. Randomly, uh, if this was one lower star, it would have been maybe playable. But unfortunately, with the stars that it has, it's a level five, uh, eighteen hundred. Unfortunately, I'm not going to play. And then we got two legacy tickets. All right, time for the best part of the show. Tied with, of course, nah, deck building is also fun. I like deck building and I like pack opening because you never know what you're going to get. Uh, dueling can is, is fun. Uh, but sometimes when, when the, you know, when our deck is outclassed, it can be a little tough. Wow. Junk berserkers. This nope, not generic junk synchron. Um, I didn't mean to click that. I didn't mean to click that necro synchron. Okay. That's pretty cool. 
All right. I, 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 I don't even know how that happened. I clicked on a card. All right, let's go through them, I guess. Junk Berserker is unplayable. Uh, this requires a Photon or Galaxy Continuous Trap Card from deck. Add it to hand or place it face up on the field. Um, this isn't bad, but like we just don't have the proper stuff to use with this. Um, this card, I believe, isn't even really that bad. Because it lets us special summon... Um, a B Trooper monster from the graveyard, we don't have any right now. But if an insect monster is destroyed by battle or card effect, we can special summon a B Trooper token. If our deck was more insect focused, I would actually play this card because it essentially like replaces the monsters. I don't know why I did that because I could just do this. Uh, the Necroz Princess is not really playable in our deck right now. A Parallel XC Dragon is 1000% playable in our deck, and we will 100% play this in our deck. It's uh, very easy to monster to summon, and I, I will be playing it. No questions asked. Uh, Machine Assembly Line is another is a, is a, I think I believe this is a junk card, so I don't think this is going to be playable. Okay, so this card is somewhat playable. We have our machine like pile that's building up in the background. I'm not gonna lie though, this card is a little slow, and it only it gives 200 attack, and then it basically puts counters on itself every time a machine goes to the graveyard. Then we can summon one back with levels equal to the, you know, the, the amount that go to the graveyard. That's not, like, terrible, but honestly, we need an absolute pure machine deck for this to even be playable. So it's, And it's a little bit slow. Alright, so this is kind of an iffy card. Um, it, it, uh... It basically, when, when a monster special summons to your opponent's side of the field, you can special... We can... Uh, each player can special summon, and it's can. They don't have to. You can summon a level 4 monster from their hand. This can be good sometimes, like if we can special summon, for example, like a barrier statue, um, or, you know, a situation like that, we can basically, yeah, we can summon like a barrier statue to our side of the field, I think that can be somewhat interesting, but other than that, I don't, I don't really see this being all that good for us. And then this is the last card, which is the, uh, Necrosynchron, um, it is a tuner that is a machine, which is interesting, it's a level 2, we already have the other level 2 synchro, which is kind of cool. Uh, the the one that special summons itself so we have a few synchros uh and we like a few a few synchrons that are easy to summon okay so these effects aren't even that bad if it goes to the graveyard for the synchro summon of a uh, wind monster we can special summon a plant uh from our deck again this isn't like terrible so if we have for example a level three monster we can increase another monster by level two so it'll make that level three into a level five we can use this plus that level five in order to make our wind synchro which we have the wind synchro zombie monster and we can basically summon that out and then um if we do that we can special summon a level one plant from the deck but that is just so much like so much has to go right for all of that to happen and, and we get a level one plant which i don't even know if we have a level one plant that would even be usable uh, through all of this foolishness unfortunately but like it's an interesting card because it can modulate levels um uh, in addition to being a tuner so that can be somewhat usable i'm definitely going to throw that in the machine pile this is going in the machine pile firewall xc is just straight up going in the deck and i don't think that we have the junk synchron yet so unfortunately we cannot use this i would use this because this actually is kind of crazy 2700 attack level seven seems like a lot and you can banish a junk monster from your grave or target one face up monster lose attack blah 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 banish it and it um if like the text is to destroy it so that these effects are all kind of like good effects but we don't have a junk synchron all right let's open these legacy tickets hopefully we get something usable um another barrier statue would be awesome i don't even know what else is in here that is usable but i know barrier statues are definitely good uh, we got the umi no taurus okay so this essentially makes it so a fish uh, sea Serpent or Aqua-type monster attacks a defense position monster and inflicts piercing. Uh, this effect actually applies for itself, which is quite cool. Uh, it's another water monster to consider because we have been pulling some more water monsters and we do still have that Marincis Link 2 monster. Minefield Eruption. We don't have any Mine Golems, but I wouldn't play it even if we did. All right, next pack. Let's see. Uh, We've got the Emblem of Awakening, which is a ritual spell for a monster that I don't want to summon. And Chaos Trap Hole. This card, honestly, isn't even that bad. 
It's when a light or dark monster, which are the two most prevalent attributes in the game, except for when we have this card, then they just suddenly disappear off the face of the earth. But when we don't have this card in play, they are the, the best two attributes. When, when either of those attributes are summoned, we can pay 2,000 life points, negate the summon of a light and dark monster, and if you do, banish it. That's actually interesting. I am more than likely going to play this card, because again, statistically speaking... Number wise, this is actually a good card because again, they are the most prevalent types in the game. But again, whenever we draw this card, all of a sudden they're playing a wind deck, they're playing fires, they're playing all of these like attributes no one ever uses. So we're going to try it, but it, 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 it'll, it'll somehow turn out badly. All right, so I'm cutting the cloud castle just because I don't think it really benefits us. I only played it because it was summonable. So I'm cutting that and I'm adding obviously the parallel exceed dragon because it's an X seed monster that we can summon that is um, just 2500 attack. That's a rank four. I think that's pretty good. Technically speaking, is better than Suship and in terms of attack, better than Suship, but Suship does get to pop. So situationally, it's better than Suship if we need to out some big monster. And then of course, we've got the chaos trap hole, which I will play because statistically speaking, it is a good card. Um, I can replace, there's a few cards that I've been thinking about getting rid of. Maybe the wheel. The wheel has come in handy, but sometimes it hasn't. We have never drawn this card yet, uh, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means we haven't drawn it. Honestly, I kind of want to get rid of a monster because having a lot of spawn trap cards is kind of better for us. But I don't know a monster that I even want to get rid of right now. I, I The monster just kind of, the lineup's getting kind of slim. We have a lot of dragons. We have a lot of warriors. We're split like 50-50 between dragons and warriors, I'd say. I'm thinking about this Greffer dude. He might be on the chopping block. I think Greffer, Greffer needs to... Uh, I think Greffer's out now. Greffer's out, and I think we're going to try the Chaos Trap Hole. Yeah, I think that's, that's a cool, uh, cool build there. Alright, next game. Uh, this hand is... Oof, rough. This hand is rough. We're going second. We lost the coin flip. I'm not happy. I don't know how. I swear Curse of Dragon is at the top of our deck. Every single duel. We're playing against Labyrinth. Absolutely not. I am not doing this. We didn't draw any spawn trap cards. Okay, never mind. We might be playing Labyrinth. I, I, I liked what he just said. Yeah, I don't think we're winning this one. This is a really bad hand. And on top of a bad hand, we're not beating Labyrinth. Alright, next game. We won the coin flip. Our hand is pretty damn good. We have There can only be one in Vigom. So, we're off to a good start, but, I mean, we'll see how it goes. Noble, Knight, Joan. We've got some good cards. We've definitely got some playable cards. It just depends on what he has, uh, whether or not we win this one. But honestly, overall, it's really just not a bad hand at all. It just depends on what deck he's playing. If he plays something that plays around, there can only be one we basically lose. But otherwise, this is a winnable game. Uh, this seems promising. This seems really promising. Emergency Teleport tells me he's probably playing a Psychic deck. Uh, probably the Punks, which is, like I said, it's pretty good. If he summons two Punks, yep, pretty good. I'm not going to activate it yet. I'm going to wait for him to put two Punks on the field, and then I'll activate it. I'm going to let him pay all the life points, do everything, put himself at a disadvantage, and then I'll and then I'll um, act, lock in the There Can Only Be One. So in the second he summons another punk, we'll, we'll activate there. Can only be one. I want him to like kind of go through his engine a little bit. That way, uh, he has to like waste his normal summon or whatever. Uh, that's not good. It means he can go into a level six. We'll see. We'll see where this where this goes next. Yeah, he has two tuners right now, so that's actually not doing anything. I don't know what. Maybe he's gonna go into a rank three. I'm I'm a little lost here. Alright, he went into a Link monster. He's made an Asuna. Which I couldn't have done anything about anyway. That was a weird uh, end of main phase. Okay. I have I had every right to be totally lost. I still don't know what's going on. We're going to put Vijam into the back row to negate this Asuna. For just in case we don't want him attacking. So now he can't attack and he can't uh, activate effects. So this can't steal an earth from our graveyard because we do have earths in play. We have the uh, we have this right here. All right, end phase. Uh, sadly, we actually can't clear this Asuna anyway. Return of the normal. This card's actually pretty good. 
So what we may do, so this is a new card. It's when exactly one monster is normal or special summoned, destroy all monsters on the field with less attack than the monster with they, uh, that was summoned. Um, so that actually can be quite good. Uh, somebody showed me this in the, well, we pulled it, but in the comments they were told me about this. It's actually kind of cool. Um, it does out our Vigom, so I might leave Vigom in the back row. Now the problem is we don't really have a lot of plays, so I might just set the Joan because Joan can't out his monster, and then we'll just set the the Law of the Normal or the Return of the Normal, and then I'll leave Vigom back here. The reason I'm leaving Vigom back here is because if I activate the Return of the Normal, um, yeah, if I if I if I Activate the return of the normal. I'm going to destroy my own Vigom, so I'm just going to leave him until later. Because right now, I think we have a pretty good, like, defensive setup here. Targo and Sekar, your opponent controls. Uh, what does that do? Destroy it? Yeah, and destroy it. Okay, so he's going to de set, destroy the set card we just set, which is fine because he didn't destroy the There Can Only Be One, thank God. Uh, so that might have been his only back or removal for There Can Only Be One. So it's a good thing. That actually happened. Once again, I'm going to let him do his punk stuff until he uh, puts two two psychic monsters on the field, and then I'll activate there. Can only be one and get him stuck on that. This guy has a lot of hand traps, and our deck is just so bad that hand traps do nothing against us. It's actually kind of amazing. Uh, literally, they just do nothing. So now he's gone into this, which is the add a punk spell which is probably going to be the field spell but like i said my plan is to really lock him in once he he gets but the second he gets two uh punks this field spell is pretty good too because it lets him special summon from your hand the punk monster from his hand so he's once again going into this which is like i don't even know what this really what a weird combination i don't even know what he could possibly go into it's a tuner a tuner Level 3, level 3, and then he's got this. So he can go into, like, I don't know, like, Access Code Talker. I don't know what he's going to go into, but it's, he has really weird variations of things. Maybe Selene? I, I, I don't even know. Unicorn, which, yeah, again, I couldn't have really stopped that. But again, right now, he doesn't know... He doesn't know what our face-down card is, so I don't know if it's a threat to him right now. So it's actually a good thing that he's doing this because he's actually going through all of his removal right now. Which is actually kind of good for us. Because uh, he's, he's used up one removal card that he would use on There Can Only Be One. Now he's using a second removal card for There Can Only Be One. Now access code, I imagine. Yeah, access code. She's going to give him a 53 access code talker and he's going to be able to pop. Which again, I, I couldn't have really stopped this. I mean, I nothing I could really do. He never he never played into there. Can only be one. It's like he saw what cards we had face down. It was actually kind of uh, infuriating. And now he's going to destroy the Vigion, which again I I couldn't have really played around that. Because if I had summoned it, it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, kind of a kind of a tough situation there. Nothing we literally nothing we could have done differently. The uh, he just kind of he played around cards without even knowing that they were there. It was actually kind of amazing. All right, that's unusable. This is unusable. Um, I guess we just set this in pass and hope for the best. Hope he doesn't have another monster. He doesn't have any more links, so I guess that that's good for us. But literally, this dude just like it is actually kind of incredible. He played around cards he didn't know existed. Like usually. They go into, like, they summon multiple psychic monsters. This guy just didn't summon multiple psychic monsters. He was like, no, I'm good. I'm going to, I'm going to, exactly, I'm going to summon, uh, I'm going to summon one psychic, one zombie, and I'm going to go into an earth that is a spellcaster. Is that, like, I don't know what this guy's deal was, but he just wasn't doing, uh, <laughs> he wasn't just, he just did not do standard plays. This doesn't really help us. But it's better than... Uh, I can cut his attack, but it's not enough because he's 53. So I'm just going to set and I'm going to go to the end phase. And he attacks over it. I'm going to obviously search. We just got to keep him off of a monster. If he draws a monster, then he can out our monster. And then we just kind of lose. Now, all of a sudden, he wants to start playing like a normal... Nope, like punk player. I, I, I'm just 
so confused. Did he like have? Did, did he have like? Does he have like X-ray vision? Does he know what we have face down? Like, how did he know to play around there can only be one? It's, it's like I'm playing Pegasus. See, why, why didn't he do this before? I'm, I'm just lost. I, I, I don't even know what to say. That's it's so like. He accidentally, accidentally played around there can only be one, and then he accidentally played around the the, the face down trap card that we set, and then he accidentally played around like he played around every card accidentally and that'll wrap it up yeah that was that was frustrating this hand is really good but we are going second which kind of sucks for us this would have been a really good hand to draw going first i like that i'm saying that more often we are we are getting better hands this is our first ever time drawing unbreakable spirit uh, which is nice but yeah, like I said, we're going second, so I don't I don't know how much it's gonna really help. I mean, I guess we can still just normal summon barrier statue and then set those two and just pass. I mean, that's that's some, oh we're playing self decay. All right, well I mean it's self decay, self decay. It, it, it's like self decay is kind of annoying to play against because it's kind of boring, but at the same time it's it's like yeah the game's not giving us reasonable matchups at the moment. Um, well, actually, the game has given us kind of reasonable matchups. We're just kind of uh, we're getting slightly outclassed. All right, that's the game. Uh, just another win against Self TK. Two legacy packs, not bad. Just regular, no no ultras or anything. But like I said, there are common cards that we can honestly use. It, it really doesn't matter. Cards at every rarity that are actually quite good. Eighteen hundred normal summon. Can banish a Laval monster, increase this by 300 if we were playing the deck, maybe, but I don't think we have enough. This is our, I think, second Bujin monster. This card's not bad, but we only have two Bujins, so not really. Junk Giant. So this card overall is not bad, but your opponent has to have a level 5 or higher monster in order to special summon this card. I mean, like, in a lot of cases that is going to happen, but there are a lot of cases where it isn't going to happen. So I think it, I might add this to our machine deck um, pile that we have. Watt Hopper, I think this might be our second copy, is it? No, it's new. Yeah, this is not really useful. I think that's our third Watt card. I think I said that I would actually use this card at one point. Actually, never mind. I'm not going to use this. We do have the, uh, the Link Monster for Six Samurais. This is our first main deck Six Samurai Monster. Uh, but it, it's not bad. It's just we don't have enough to really play it. We actually, I think, pulled the Claw of Hermos. Okay, honestly, I think we actually play this card. Uh, so basically, we have Claw of Hermos. And this is incredible. I, I cannot believe I'm playing this card. All right, so this it this it works with Claw of Hermos and, um, and any warrior monster. Any at all. So you activate Claw of Hermos and that warrior monster, which are half our deck is warrior, the other half is dragon. Uh... It turns it into this monster, which is a level 4 monster, which has good synergy with us. It's a warrior, has good synergy with us. This is our first way to fusion summon. Basically, if this card is special summon, we can target a face-up monster on the field, ours or our opponents, and then equip it. It can make two attacks per battle phase. And if it attacks a defense position monster, it does piercing, which honestly is actually kind of good. I am more than likely going to actually play this card. Or at least I'm going to try it. Uh, Darling Cobra is a pretty good card if we get Polymerization or Fusion cards or any of the other, uh, if we have Orpha Scorpio, I'll play that. And then is this actually summonable? Three level five monsters. We have another rank five. It's incredible. We just keep getting rank fives. All right, this is only good if it has a Utopia as XYZ material. Otherwise, this card is kind of, eh, it's not so great. So uh, we probably won't be playing this one, but it's crazy that we get another rank five. The, I actually cannot believe this, but I'm probably going to be playing this Rocket Hermos Cannon. All right, time for these legacy tickets. Let's see what we get. Uh, honestly, what am I hoping for? <laughs> More barrier statues. That's what I'm actually hoping for. Uh, this isn't really usable right now. Shadow Tamer. This isn't that good unless we're like playing against Burning Abyss. Maybe it's good, but... That's about it. This is a weird card. It's always it always counts as an Archfiend card. I don't know what she has to do with Archfiends. Some random chick with a whip. All right, next pack. Let's see what we get in here. Thousand Dragon. I don't think we can summon in any way, but cool to see. And then 
Uh, gained a thousand light points. I'm not going to be using that. Let's go adjust the deck a little bit. All right, I just threw in the Claw of Hermos and I threw in the Rocket Hermos Cannon. It's crazy. We actually did have the Claw of Hermos and we actually did pull the exact fusion for it, which is insane. I can't believe we pulled those two things. All right, our opponent won the coin flip again and they are they have chosen to go first, so we'll see what they're playing. Our hand is definitely not looking too shabby. And we've got bang bang shot, expendable die. Like we've got we've got some stuff going on here. Rose Dragon, Gaga Gun Magician. We've got some we've got some plays here. I'm gonna summon the Rose Dragon and I'm gonna search just because I want to go plus one. And then we'll see. I don't even know what our opponent's playing. Okay, they're playing the punks. Okay. And playing the punk deck which are a lot of earths and water and a bunch of random stuff like i said i don't know what it is but we we were playing chaos trap hole uh, lights and darks are the most prevalent type in the game the second we play a card that stops lights and darks we draw not lights and darks um and we could have also summoned jones so we would have had access to uh, expendable die but i mean it's whatever i guess we just set it just so next turn when we normal summon it we have access to it but I mean, what are the chances we we uh, play against a deck that has Earth monsters? Now, if they go into Chaos, um, Chaos, the the Chaos monster, the the one that mills five cards. If he goes into that, then I'm going to negate that by paying two thousand life points. Uh, but if if he's anything like the last Punk player we play against, he'll just like play perfectly around cards that he don't doesn't know are in play, which is. I don't even know how that happened last time. So yeah, hopefully he, he summons that chaos monster. Yeah, he's going to go fusion summon into the water monster so we can't do anything about this. We just got to wait for him to summon a light or a dark and whatever he sinks his resources into that, then I'll, uh, then I'll make things happen. So now he can go into the level 8, but not before getting to the field spell. Alright, here's chaos ruler, most likely chaos ruler. It should be Chaos Ruler. Of course, he summons the player perfectly around. <laughs> he plays perfectly around our monster without without our around our card. I I, to, I don't know what it is, but I knew this was going to happen. The most prevalent types in the game, and our opponent is playing around it perfectly. No, he just summons earth, waters and earths. Like, of course, it, it it's like we every time we play these cards, we we we. We never see them when we need them. It's like we're gonna play around. We're gonna play against Blue Eyes and Dark Magician. We're never gonna see this card ever. It's not. No, we're, it's not gonna be around. We're gonna be hearing rumors about it. It's not gonna be around. But the second we play against like an Earth Water deck like this, of course, hopefully at some point in this long combo, he he summons uh, a Light or a Dark. And now he summons a Wind. Just insult to injury. Literally insult to injury. And he shuffles back the card. Or he adds them back to our hand. That is insane. That is insane. Like, the, the most prevalent cards, the most prevalent attributes in the entire game are light and dark. And this guy just summoned three different attributes without summoning light or dark. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. This stuff is unreal. And that, that's pretty much the game. We have nothing. I mean, I, I could just sit here and wait through this. If he summons one more monster, we lose. But that's just... That is just absolutely insane. Most of the time, that's game. All right, so most of the time they go into Chaos Ruler, not this guy. We played two uh, punk players back-to-back -back that, like, are psychic. They could see the cards that we have face down without actually, like, seeing them. All right, next game, we just won the coin flip. Our hand is okay, I guess. It's okay. I guess we just set Joan and set the expendable die, and we just pass here. So probably what we've got to do. Yeah, our hand isn't isn't the best. It's not the worst either, but it's not the best. I mean, we've got some plays, but if this person's as lucky as the last person we played against, that was incredible. Like, both punk players we played against like per played perfectly around cards that they didn't know were face down. I don't even know what to say about that. All right, he just passes. I I'm happy with that. Uh, we can go into Rocks Rose and just continue the uh, advantage here. Where we can summon out the Est, which will make us attack a thousand, which I don't believe will help right now. Oh right, yeah, I'm just gonna go into the Rocks Rose, and I'm gonna search for free. Hopefully, our opponent wastes wastes an Ash on it. 
yep it's perfect because it's better that they waste it on that since i don't want them to waste it on expendable die because expendable die does have a draw effect um and having the draw for effect means that it is ashable, so it is good that he wasted the ash there. And now we can synchro summon actually into the Zeta. But honestly, does this even? Yeah, I, I we'll, we'll, we'll Zeta main phase two. That's what we're gonna do. So right now we're just actually I don't want a Zeta in main phase two because if I Zeta and I can't use the effect of uh, expend, I can't use expendable die if I Zeta. So I'm probably not gonna Zeta. Even though Zeta is a good effect, I'm, I, I don't think it's the right move because, again, we just kind of lose that. And then we have also the power frame. We, we have, like, Zeta is an interruption, obviously, uh, because it has a quick effect to uh, banish uh, a special summon monster. And then, uh, like, it banishes their monster and the Zeta itself, and then they come back later. But the problem is then we don't get to use Expendable Die, and I don't know if we're, we're going to draw the right things for Expendable Die. So it's really like there's, there, I don't think there's there's like no right or wrong play here, unfortunately. Yeah, there's no right or wrong play. I just I'm gonna go with this play just because I'd rather have the expendable die in play because the expendable die will also give me a draw on top of being able to pop a card. But the um, the Zeta will banish a monster, but the monster will come back, and so will my monster. The Zeta and it and the other monster will come back. Twin Twisters. So I guess I made the wrong decision. I should have. Uh, yeah, I made the wrong decision. I mean, I guess I can tribute the Joan and then pop that and draw a card, but I, I don't think that's going to help much. Ultimately, I made the wrong decision. But again, it's like there's no way to have known that. There's just no, I'm, like, I'm not psychic. I'm not like the people we just played against that were playing punks that knew every single, that perfectly played around every set card I had. And from here, we just lose. There's nothing we can do. We're not, we're not beating unaffected dinosaurs into um, ultimate conductor all right so we just won the coin flip our opponent has a rabbit made in chinese letters which i mean it, it could mean that he's playing self dk which I'm, I'm actually not happy with uh, i actually don't want to keep playing against self dk i want to play against dex the problem is when i play against dex i play against like essentially psychic people uh, <laughs> at least this episode I'd rather play against real decks that are, you know, somewhat on our level, you know, starter decks, stuff like that. But I mean, you can't, beggars can't be choosers. We're going to summon Rux Rose. And we're going to use that effect, add the Blue Rose. Um, I guess we just set this, set this. Uh, we're going to Pendulum Scale this. And then that way the Iron Dragon is active whenever our opponent does something hopefully as we have two cards in in the pendulum zone they put anything here iron dragons active and then we have protection and stuff from their attacks and we have battle of the elements and the dragon made tiding so we have a few interruptions which is quite nice if he is playing self dk then we get a win if he's not playing self dk then you know we have a decent uh we have a half decent board here it's not the best it's not the worst Yep, he is playing self TK indeed. All right, that's another anticlimactic win against self TK, but I mean, I guess it's a part of Master Duel. Nothing, nothing we can really uh, do about it. I don't like the wins because they feel unearned. We got three of the Legacy packs. All right, let's open a Master Pack. I might really cut myself off of these uh, self TK wins. I might, uh, if like, if I win with self TKs, I'm thinking about just not even taking a Master Pack. Like, it feels like so unearned uh, this is a card for gadgets stats are okay but we don't have gadgets to really make use with this so as of right now i don't think it's very usable maybe episode one i would have used it because of the defense uh, we don't have enough yang zings to make that usable try blaze accelerator we don't have blaze accelerator so we can't really do that uh amazon is chain master we have other amazon is cards so we've got Four other Amazonas cards. No, three other Amazonas cards. The trap card, and then two monsters. The queen and the other thing, and the uh, the one that puts monsters on the bottom of the deck. So we have a few Amazonas cards. Uh, this card's not like terrible because it lets you when it's destroyed a battle. Like we can pay 15 and then look at our opponent's hand, take a monster. Uh, but I mean, let's be honest. Like let's say they have a Fenrir hand. Most of the time they 
will have already summoned the Fenrir. Like, they're not going to have the Fenrir at hand. So, I don't, I don't think that this card is really that usable. It's definitely an interesting card. It was definitely a lot more usable in the show than it is now. This is actually good uh, for going second because it's a 2400 special summon. If two or more cards are in the same column, you can special summon this card from your hand. That's actually, like, kind of good. And I'm probably going to play this in our just good deck. I, th I think I'm probably going to play this because, I mean, it's just, again, it's just a free 2400 normal summon. So I'm pro special summon. So I'm probably going to play this in our, in our, in our, like, good, in our just good cards deck. But I'm probably not going to play this in the, in the warrior machine, in, in our warrior dragon deck. Uh, Rank Kids Roxy's isn't really usable for us right now. A cell. This is a alien card, and this one should be a super. So let's see what it is. It's not a super. Are they just the pack was just gold for no reason. Uh, this is uh, three or more, max five level three monsters. So at least three level three monsters, and the card is just just the absolute like below average, just below average, and requires three level three monsters. Uh, we almost had something good for Marauding Cap. So I'm not gonna lie, Mech Knight. Indigo Eclipse is actually quite good. Like I said, it's probably going in our like good good cards deck. Um, as for these others, I'm probably not going to be playing them until we get more stuff to support them. All right, Legacy Tickets. Let's see what we get out of these. We've got three Legacy Tickets. One's Hollow, which doesn't really mean it's a Hollow. It just means it's a rare or better. So let's see what we get. Uh, Mist Valley Soldier and uh, Fruits of Kozaki Study. So we get to look. At our next three draws and rearrange them. Not really that good. Uh, this is a level four wing beast tuner, which isn't that bad. All right, so this isn't like terrible. Uh, basically, returns a monster to the hand at the end of the damage step if it wasn't destroyed. Uh, this is good against monsters can't be destroyed by battle and stuff like that. And also, if our opponent has a really strong defense position monster, this can actually be good against them. So this is in a certain way like uh what's his name it's like the uh the dinosaur that we have uh, but with the dinosaur the monster always gets bounced with this card it only gets bounced if this card remains on the field to do it so essentially like it's only under circumstances but it is also a tuner and a wing beast uh which is kind of cool because we pulled that other wing beast monster the wing beast synchro monster uh that requires a a Actually, I think it, the, the tuner, it, it requires a wing beast. The tuner is not the wing beast, but the, the, the other material is the wing beast. So this might not be usable for that. Overall, interesting card, but I don't think it's going to be usable for our purposes. Maybe in the in the generally good cards deck, but definitely obviously not in the dragon deck. All right, so this card's like, when it attacks, it becomes 22. When it gets attacked, it becomes 14. It's like, it's kind of like the Steam Gyroid. Um, it is just the okay card i guess might be able to play it uh this is two level seven monsters so basically it's a level seven monster that if it gets targeted uh we can negate the card that targets it by detaching material if i played level sevens i, I mean do we have any level sevens in the deck i have to take a look at it but obviously with gakuga magician plus any level seven we can go into this guy so it's actually not that bad of a pull. I just got to check if we're playing any level 7s right now. If we are, I, I will probably play this. Alright, let's see what this pack is. It's glowing. That usually means something, but it may not. Absolute end. So it just makes our opponent's attacks direct attacks instead of regular attacks. Um, interestingly enough, this could be good for us if we have the barrier statue. And that's about it. So if we have the barrier statue and like our opponent goes to battle their normal summon becomes a direct attack that's not bad but at the same time you know bear statue is not searchable we have small world but it's a little complicated to use uh, so i don't know if that's going to work and then we've got like what about this pack right these are two non-hollow cards they're not shiny they're not rares there's nothing about this pack that should have made it glow yellow in any way these are just two of the lowest possible rarity cards that you could possibly imagine. I just, I don't get it. All right, so this card could actually be good, but it's a little situational because our life points have to be 4,000 less or less. And then we pay half our life points and then our, our monster gains the difference between 4,000 and our, and our opponent. 
yeah, our, for, between uh, the difference between uh, our current life points and 4,000. And that's, yeah, our monster. Uh, I mean, this card doesn't seem like it's that bad, but it's just, it requires us to already be a 4,000, which sometimes we are down, but sometimes we're not down. I just think we have better spawn trap cards right now. All right, we just won the coin flip, and we chose to go first. Our hand is looking pretty damn serious. This is a really pretty good hand. I don't even know. Do we have any rank threes that we can see? This would be a perfect situation to summon a rank three, but we just don't have any. Like, let me check. I think we do, but like, this is our only rank three. It's the gear giant. It requires three level three monsters, so we can't even really summon it. Uh, but this, this is like the ideal hand for a level 3. Because we can summon Marauding, Special Summon Gaga, Ga, and then change Gaga Ga to a level 3 and go into a rank 3 monster. Like, perfect. Except we don't have a level 3. Now, what is cool is that we have There Can Only Be One, we have Crackdown, we have the uh, Return of the Normal. I'm going to set these three um, once our opponent is finished thinking on our standby phase. I, I'm not going to summon any monsters. I'm just going to set these three and pass. And... Um, that way our board is actually clear so we can use the the return of the normal without having to fear that we're destroying our own cards in any way and then also we have the crackdown to steal our opponent's monster and we have the there can only be one uh, ready to go essentially all right our opponent is playing exo sisters which actually there can only be one is pretty good against exo sisters um, as long as they they summon a monster we can lock them in exo sisters has different cards in its extra deck than it does in its main deck I think the main deck monsters if I remember correctly are warriors and the extra deck monsters are I believe the extra deck monsters no the main deck monsters spellcasters and the extra deck monsters are and he has evenly matched of course he has evenly matched as if we didn't have to deal with enough here um I'm not going to chain anything, but obviously I have to get rid of stuff, which sucks. And it's a good thing I didn't put these down. I'm going to get rid of Return of the Normal, and I'm going to get rid of the Crackdown. Um, I don't want to get rid of the Crackdown, because the Crackdown would be really good. But unfortunately, we do have to get rid of the Crackdown. But I am going to... I'm going to activate the... There can only be one on this. Yeah, on this. So that when he summons it... He tries to summon from the deck, he can't. So he'll summon the Marth out, but he won't summon anything else. Yeah, that was a little a little rough, I'm not going to lie. Um, that was our first time giving, getting evenly matched, I believe, in this series. And that, that's an evenly match that kind of hurts. Because I would have loved to steal the Martha and then summon Gaga Ga Magician. Actually, can I even? No, I can't because they're both spellcasters. So I couldn't have done it anyway. And now our opponent's just kind of done here. We actually don't have a monster that can out Martha, which is embarrassing, but it's the reality of the situation. We can back the square one Martha. I mean, that we can do, but does that really even benefit us? We just let's draw it the next turn again. Um, Martha's the best card in the archetype, so damn, this kind of sucks. Honestly, I think we just, I think we just hold resources and just pass. We could set a monster in defense mode, protect our life points, but like, what are we protecting from? If he's 1600 attack, I mean, it's not even... Like I said, there's nothing we can do. If we if we put this back on his deck, uh, he can just activate it again and summon it for free. Or just normal summon it. Um, and then he's got... We just can't clear his monster. That's the issue here. So I think we just, we just pass. I'd rather save the Marauding Captain in hand. So that next turn I can... You know, if I draw something useful, I can maybe special summon it out with Marauding Captain. He's going to go to battle phase, which makes sense. He's going to attack us for the 16. We got to get him. Like, we got to wrap this up before he draws into, like, removal. But we have to, like, draw a monster that can actually do something, like, with decent attack. Claw of Hermos. That is not good. At all for us right now. This was always the fear with Claw of Hermos. It really was. Okay. I think we've got a, uh, we've got a play here if my brain is working properly. Actually, can I even use Claw of Hermos? Oh, okay, I can use it. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Okay, 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 it's fine, it's fine. But then I can't discard... Oh, yeah, it's fine. That's fine, okay. Let's see if this all works out. I don't know what he has face down to, because he's got, like, you know, the Exo Sister garbage, so he can just banish random stuff that we have. So we're going to use Claw of Hermos on the Marauding Captain. We probably should have summoned the... Uh... We could also go into the Sioux Ship, funny enough. He's going to max C. <laughs> A Claw of Hermos. All right. It's never been done before, but... Let's go into the Hermos Cannon. 
Uh, we'll summon this out. Not that it matters, but I'll summon it out and attack. So we have a few options. I guess it equips on summon. Okay, good to know. Oh, wait, I'm a moron. Ugh, why did I do that? I mean, it's whatever, but like, damn. I, I, I didn't think that Claw of Hermos, like, activates on summon. And I was hoping to, uh... I was hoping to go into the Sioux ship off the Claw of Hermos. I didn't know that on summon it automatically triggers to equip to a monster. If this card is summon target, like I, I didn't know it was mandatory, so now we just lose everything for nothing. Just gave up like four cards for zero, and we gave him a card for the maxi. Yeah, that was dumb. I didn't know it was like a mandatory effect. I was hoping I would just get a little a free level four monster, and then I would just be able to go into the, the Sioux ship there. I mean, at least we drew the Zubaba Knight so we can just attack. Yeah, it really sucks. All right. Whatever, whatever. It's not the end of the world. That's kind of insane. It, like, is a mandatory effect on summon. I, I really just did not expect that. It has to equip to something, including our opponent's cards, too. So, if our opponent has a monster, it just summons and equips to something. It must equip to something. So, you can equip to our opponent's stuff, which is really actually kind of frustrating. So, now you, should, you could just make another... Uh, he just summoned this for free again. Why he summoned in an attack, I don't know. Knowing that he can't special summon from the deck. Uh, yeah, it kind of sucks. <laughs> I actually might take this. 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 Yeah. Well, we, we won. That's good. That's good. We won because of the floodgate. But I mean, I, I might end up taking that Claw of Hermos out. I didn't know that was a mandatory effect that activated as soon as it hit the field. Because honestly, I thought it was just kind of like it turns our monsters in our hand and field into a possible equip or a possible level four. But now that I've seen it kind of in action, unfortunately, I actually think the card can actually... Number, number one, it costs two cards to make. And afterwards, it's mandatory. So it, it has to like turn into an equip immediately. So it actually might not be the card that I um, thought it was. But I'm happy to get a, a legitimate win there. Three legacy packs, pretty good. All right, here's our master pack. It's glowing. Does that mean anything? Didn't mean anything last time. Uh, let's see what we get inside. We got a UR. That could be so many things. I can't. I'm not. I don't even get excited anymore. Uh, Perform hole bot eyes lizard. All right, this isn't like totally bad if we had like things to do with it. Uh, We've got the Dizzying Winds of the Yosh Yosen Village, which is a Yosenju card. We do have some Yosenju cards, but not the good ones, not yet. Uh, we've got the Clock Arc, which is a machine with a ton of effects. All right, this card is kind of goofy. Um, as long as it's, it's... This is a very weird card. I don't even know what to even what, what to even do with it. There's so many effects, so much like weirdness on here. I don't even know what I would even do. Can't be destroyed by battle, and it destroys itself. It's not in the center column, which is like... What were they thinking? There's so much going on there. There's a Labyrinth card. We don't have enough Labyrinth cards to make that usable just yet. I didn't mean to do that. Wow, we got an Abyss Act there. Okay, that it was anticlimactic. As anything i hate that you like click one little thing and it screws everything up all right we don't have we only have one photon card unfortunately so we can't really use this card uh infernity beetle is an insect if we have no cards in our hand we contribute this card special summon two infernity beetles from the deck i would maybe play this if i had more infernity beetles um this card isn't that bad but we don't have enough uh luna lights right now we have the luna light bottle we have the luna light emerald girl and we have this luna light which this, this is a good card all of the individual luna light cards that we have are actually quite good uh but as a total like package here unfortunately we don't have enough and then of course we pulled the abyss actor which is two monsters including a fiend and then it's has just really really abyss actor specific effects uh unfortunately for us this this pack was kind of a dud that was so anticlimactic and i hate the fact that when you accidentally click there it just opens all of the freaking cards um destroying anything in terms of uh destroying any of the uh the the uh i don't know like the the, the hidden aspect of it all right let's see what's in these master packs There we go. Let's see. Pharaoh's Treasure is a not very good card, if I remember correctly. Yeah, this is not that good. Um, 
All right, so this card isn't like totally bad, but the problem is we don't have anything to do with that monster. So we can steal our opponent's monster if we take a direct attack, their strongest monster essentially. Um, its effects are negated and it cannot declare an attack, which for us really sucks because we don't have a lot of great levels for X Seed summons. We don't have a lot of great, uh, just in general, like we don't have a lot of great cards uh, to do. So honestly, this card may not work out for us, unfortunately. Um, yeah, it's just it's just kind of a disaster. Just because we get the monster, we really legitimately can't do anything. It's not like we can link it away. Uh, but, all right, so this card is actually not bad, and it is removal. So basically, if our monster is like destroyed by battle or sent to the graveyard, um, even during the damage step, we could target one monster on the field and destroy it. It's actually not bad. So if our opponent destroys our monster, we can essentially destroy their monster. I might actually play this. Then we've got Nitro Unit. This basically turns every monster into an Elemental Hero Flame Wingman. I've already like seen this card. I remember it was on the show. Uh, that card's cool, but we'd need to summon like a really strong monster in order for that to be usable. Wall Shadow needs a bunch of stuff. Magical Labyrinth. This, this card's a disaster. And then Baby Dragon, which is actually now we have Thousand Dragon Baby Dragon. So we just need the polymerization. Uh, I might actually play this Miniaturize or what does this say? All right, next game, we won the coin flip. We're going first. Uh, pretty decent hand, actually. Yeah, we've got the uh, Heratic Dragon. We have pretty good back row. Like, this is a solid, solid, solid hand. I'm not even angry. I'm going to summon this just in case it gets targeted, because if it gets targeted for something, we can quick effect, switch it out, and then we're going to set everything else because we can't afford not to. Yes, we're playing into Harpy's Feather Duster, but again, we literally can't afford not to. Um, yeah, I might... That Claw of Hermos, I'm going to give it one more chance. I like Claw of Hermos. I think it's cool and it really fits the motif of the deck. But I really don't like the fact that it like instantly equips itself to something onto the field, including possibly our opponent's monsters. So I might get rid of it. We're playing against probably... I'm going to... This is good, actually. So as soon as he summons this, uh, this is... Who is this? Ashuna. We're going to flip the There Can Only Be One and now he can't go into the little monk and if he is playing if he is playing sword soul then he that's it that's essentially his turn there's nothing remaining for him to do here so his turn is pretty much over now the problem is unfortunately tenyi has these gigantic monsters that they can just summon with tons of attack Woo! damn that's nice okay i'm not even mad that was great so we beat this deck because of there can only be one and we beat exosys because of there can only be one those are just straight up like tier two tier three decks so i am totally happy with that win uh, i'd rather win like this than uh than lose against uh than win against self dk but obviously i'd rather win just the normal way we are in gold one we got some gems we got three legacy packs again let's go open that master pack all right, here we are. We're going to open this master pack. Hopefully, we don't get a fake UR like we did last time. Like I said, I don't really care about the rarities of the cards that I'm pulling because there are literal, there are commons that we can pull that would significantly, significantly improve our deck. Uh, so we've got Artifacts Unleashed. Requires Artifact cards. I don't think we have enough. Uh, we had a Hidden UR, which is a good one. We got We Witch Apprentice. Any two Dark Monsters. It makes all mo Dark Monsters gain attack. And if it's destroyed, I think it recurs a Dark Monster. Uh, yeah, good card all around. I'm probably going to play. Why do I always do this? Oh my god, that's annoying. All right, why does that always happen? I try to like click and I accidentally click in the crevice in between and it opens all the cards. All right, whatever. Shino Bird, uh, Crow is stat wise terrible. It's even bad, honestly, in, in Shino Birds. Um, and it works with it's, it's basically it, it's basically like an honest for um. It's like an honest for uh, whatever spirit monsters. We're not playing it. This is our second copy of Tremid Pulse, I believe, right? Yeah, this is our second copy. We're not using the first one or the second one. Uh, we don't have Earthbounds, so we can't use that. Uh, during the draw phase, you can equip one spell card from your deck or graveyard to your hand. Or add one from your deck or graveyard to the hand. Uh, this isn't like bad, but like I, I don't think this is totally usable for us. Uh, we do have a fire warrior we have a few fire warriors and we do have equip spells but honestly this card's a little bit slow uh brain control is an interesting card 
I'm considering playing it, but at the same time, it's kind of like, it's kind of iffy. Like, there's a lot of cards. You have to, Brain Control seems like a crazy card, but it is uh, really, really power crept because when they eroded it and brought it back, they made it so it has to be a monster that can be normal summoned or set. So that means that none of the extra deck monsters can essentially be taken with Brain Control. It can basically just be monsters that don't have a can't be normal summoner set restriction so like if our opponent has a blue eyes we can take it but if they have like a blue eyes ultimate we can't take it if they have any exceed monster any pendulum fusion whatever well, pendulums they can but like all of the other extra deck mechanics we cannot take our opponent's monster and most of the time on an end board of Yu-Gi-Oh, that is what's going to be on an end board of Yu-Gi-Oh. so i honestly don't think that this card is that good and then let's go look at that super rare that we pulled and this requires three Steel Swarm monsters as tribute to, to normal summon this card. Pay after your life to destroy all other cards on the field. Not terrible, but we don't have three Steel Swarm monsters, so we can't play it. So, unfortunately, out of this pack, other than Wee Witch Apprentice, which is still maybe a playable card because we don't have a lot of darks, but we are definitely going to play it. But uh, other than that, I don't think we play anything. Now, the Legacy Packs. Let's see what we get out of the Legacy Packs. Got three packs. None of them are glowing. Not that it matters. <laughs> the glows are have been absolute lies lately. There's a lot of lights on this one. Let's see. First one is Moki Moki. A drift. This adds a Moki Moki card. We don't have anything that really works with that. That artwork looks insanely cool. But it just doesn't work with anything we have. Uh, this doesn't really work with us, but it's a normal plant. Maybe that'll come up one day. I don't know if it will or won't, but I mean that's kind of cool. Uh, then we've got the Zubaba Buster. This is a level three monster that is 1800 attack. Some really good stats on this card. All right, so this can destroy uh, at the end of the damage step. If so, if this inflicts battle damage to your opponent at the end of the damage step, destroy one face-up monster on the field with the lowest attack. If you do, this card loses 800 attack. That effect is mandatory, meaning if we attack directly with this card, it destroys essentially itself <laughs> or one of our weakest monsters. I, I don't think that this is playable. Unfortunately, it, it reads a lot better. It looks a lot better than like it's going to be. Uh, Tula Tin. Okay, this card is actually kind of good. <laughs> Uh, this is probably better than a lot of the uh, monsters that we've gotten in the last little while. I actually think this is totally playable. I don't know if this is worth playing in our Dragon Warrior deck, but this is a good card. So if our opponent destroyed two monsters in our battle phase, we can special summon this card. And if it's special summon, we pick an attribute, destroy all monsters with that attribute, and then our opponent can't normal or special summon monsters with that attribute. That's kind of insane against like a mono attribute de deck. So if we get like a Marauding Captain, special summon two monsters, and then just pass, and our opponent like destroys both of them, we get to essentially blow up their board, special summon this, and lock them out of an attribute. The problem is, I don't think that this works with our Dragon Warrior deck. I think this goes into like our regular good stuff deck, but I actually don't think that this goes in our uh, existing deck, um, the one that we've been like doing quite well with. So I think that that card is good and definitely something to keep an eye on. Big Insect. Interesting card. Not usable quite yet. And then After the Struggle, also known as After Genocide, before it changed the name. Uh, this card is not that great. Yeah, the only card that I would maybe play is this card right here. Uh, I don't think we pulled anything out of the main pack other than the Wee Witch that we would even play. All right, we just won. We just lost a coin flip, but our opponent made us go, go first. We drew... There can only be one. Again, <laughs> I'm not unhappy. Uh, we'll see what they're playing. They made me go first. I don't I have a blue eyes mate. Who knows what they're playing. Our hand isn't terrible by any means. Honestly, we can just not even summon anything and just set three cards. That would probably be the best thing to do. Uh, but we could also just summon the Zubaba. Yeah, we'll probably just summon Zubaba and then... In attack mode, only because this requires it to be in attack mode. There can only be one is obviously very good, and Twister is very, very decent. But uh, not super shabby here. Not a shabby opening. We've been drawing there can only be one a lot, which I'm happy with. Uh, we probably, I don't know what they're playing. If they're playing Mechanko, I probably should have just left the monster off the board. But, I mean, we'll, we'll see. 
We probably, but I mean, like, I can't play against a specific deck. Yeah, they're playing Blue Eyes more than likely. And uh, there can only be one is actually quite good against Blue Eyes. The El Battle of the Elements, not so much, but the McCain, the, the, uh, yeah, there can only be one is actually quite good against Blue Eyes because obviously he can never ever summon more than one Blue Eyes monster. Um, the problem is if he gets Jet into circulation, we pretty much lose this duel. He just sent Arc Brave, which is quite promising because by the time Arc Brave is usable in my standby phase, he'll already have a dragon. All right, so he's gonna summon Arc Brave and then he's gonna try to summon another. All right, so actually it's a good thing I didn't use the. Uh, He's going to target Blue Eyes in the graveyard, which is fine with me. Yeah, he's going to summon the Blue Eyes. That's fine. Arc Brave is actually quite dangerous, like I said. Because as you can see here, Arc Brave, um, if it's summoned from the graveyard, he can banish as many face-up spell and trap cards. Back to square one. This sucks because whatever monster he's going to... He's going to put back this monster, and obviously... Um, if he puts the monster back, that means we're going to draw it again. Uh, there's nothing that we can do about that, unfortunately. So we're gonna take we're gonna take some direct damage here. He's gonna do the classic set before entering the battle phase. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and special summon this just because I need to defend my life points because he's got a 3,000 attacker on board. So I'm just gonna summon that, and I already know obviously what I'm gonna draw. And before the end phase, I need to uh, activate the there can only be one. That way in standby phase, I, I don't have to deal with the Arc Brave, summoning Arc Brave. And banishing that there can only be one because he's locked into all dragons. I'm going to draw, obviously, spoiler alert, the monster he put on top of my deck. And we're just going to set that face down. Not that we had a choice because of... Uh, not that we had a choice yet. So now we're just going to pass. So we are just on kind of on the defensive right now. He's locked into this one Blue Eyes White Dragon. Uh, I don't want him to draw a lot. Oh my god, of course. Why didn't you just do that in the standby phase then? That sucks for us. Uh, nothing we can do there. He had it, he had it, you know. You gotta respect it. Alright, so fortunately the the Arc Braves are um, are out of circulation right now, which is good. T it turns out you cannot tar you can you can't special summon Arc Brave with Arc Brave, which is good. But the Arc Braves are out of circulation right now. He has one card in hand, so we know he can't summon alternative. Um I don't know what he has or what he could use, but I know he can't use that card. So right now he's pretty much locked into that one blue eyes. There's a lot of cards that we could draw that could be useful, but unfortunately we don't have. Battle of the Elements is probably useless because he's got one million light monsters. You know what would have been really useful? A Chaos Trap Hole. That would have been super useful. But of course, and I don't know why, uh, we draw it against the deck that summons winds, earths, and everything but what we need. Uh, I'm not even going to really set that because there's no point. Uh, we have a level 4 and a level 4. I mean, the problem is we don't we don't have a rank 4 that matters in this situation. And we don't have anything that like gains attack for us. If we had there's so many cards that could have been useful right now. That, uh, that unbroken spirit thing. Like We have so many cards that could have been useful right now. But unfortunately, our rank 4s... We could go into this. It doesn't out blue eyes. We can go into this. It doesn't out blue eyes. We can go into this. It doesn't out blue eyes. So we don't have anything that really outs blue eyes right now. So I think we just end here, and uh, hopefully he doesn't go off too much. I just want to keep some resources in hand just in case. Uh, but unfortunately, our rank fours don't don't out a blue eyes white dragon. So there's nothing that we can really there's nothing that we can really do about this. Like I said, we draw things so out of order. See what could we draw right now? A dragon maid. Ugh. Yeah, this is this is the beginning of the end. This is definitely the beginning of the end. Now he's going to send that to the graveyard, and, and this duel is pretty much over. Now he's going to battle face some of the big monster back out. I mean, I guess the, the, the great thing is we do have the Battle of the Elements, but it doesn't matter because our monster is face down, so we can't do anything about it anyway. I mean, I guess the positive thing is once he gets rid of this, then we can use the Battle of the Elements, and then now he has to send something to the graveyard. All right, he's going to end phase. He's got... We have to summon a monster for us to be able to activate this thing, the Battle of the Elements. But I, 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 just, I just don't think we win here. Like, we lose no matter what. If we summon a monster, we can out something. But, like, the other monster is going to stick around. 
I guess we summon that. And now that the Battle of the Elements is live. But honestly, I think we wait till the battle phase and then we... Uh, and then we make him send everything to the graveyard. Or he, we wait until he puts a Dragon Maiden onto the, into the circulation. Okay, now he's got a light. Let's see. Hopefully he picks to keep the fire on board. Hopefully. Hopefully he picks to keep the fire. Because then we, we, we get saved for another turn. I don't even know what that really does. Being that it's not a continuous card. Yep, that's fine. He still has to resolve. Alright, he kept blue eyes, which means, um, unfortunately, this is game. Now, right, we just won the coin flip. We chose to go first. So, interesting. We'll see how this goes. Our hand isn't... This is a frustrating hand because it's like, in theory, I should be setting Vijam. But in reality, I have to kind of play with the uh, Battle of the Elements. I don't know why. Every time we draw Curse of Dragon, it's always in this spot. It's always in this spot. It's always there. So I kind of have to just do this and set this. And uh, that's probably a better play than setting the Vidjom. Because setting the Vidjom will turn off the uh, Battle of the Elements. It's a little inconsistency that we have in our deck. But it's not like the end of the world. It's got a Chinese name. Which means we might be playing against Self Decay. Okay, we're not um, playing against Self Decay. We're playing against the Tri Brigades. Which, I guess we'll, we'll see what he summons onto the board. I don't think Battle of the Elements really helps against Tri-Brigades. I'm, I'm happy it's not self-decay, to be honest with you. I thought it was for a second there. Um, he's going to activate this, banishing these guys. I, I can't activate Battle of the Elements yet. It doesn't really do anything. And he's going to go, I imagine, into... What is that? Three he banished or four? Three. So he's going to summon something. And then he's going to block himself into Beast Warriors and stuff. Most people don't play this card. But I guess he's playing it. So he's going to lock himself. We'll see what he summons. But depending on what he summons, he may have just... I mean, I can use... I can use Battle of the Elements. But it literally does not... It'll just send Nerval to the graveyard. Which I don't think that actually helps me. To send Nerval to the graveyard. Because, you know, just trigger Nerval. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think that actually is a beneficial play. Probably Link 4. Yep, Shirag. If Shirag targets, actually, Shirag doesn't target. So we might as well activate the Battle of the Elements since Shirag doesn't target anyway. I, I might as well do this. And then Shirag will banish probably my monster. Dogmatica Fleur Knighted. Interesting, another monster that does not target, so we won't be able to use the effect of Heretic. Oh, this guy is like literally playing the, uh, the, the, he's literally playing like the Dogmatica lore, the, the Dogmatica, he's playing the Dogmatica lore in a deck, which is actually kind of interesting, he's going to banish that instead of the card that was designated to go in Graveyard regardless. And he's going to summon the Knighted monster that he lost for no reason, and now he's summoning back. This has just been like a misplay fest. <laughs> it's like misplay after misplay after misplay. He got rid of this card for no reason. Had to bring it back again. Uh, he banished a card that was going to go to Graveyard anyway. It was like misplay after misplay. Alright. Things are not looking good, I'll tell you that. Not at all. Not at all. Our best bet is set Cubic Seed. Hopefully he doesn't summon another monster to trigger the effect of the uh, Shurag. Because if he triggers Shurag, and he will trigger Shurag, yep. Which will banish our monster, which will end the game. That sucks, but it, you know, it, it happens. We got to lose some. We can't win them all. All right, next game. Let's see what we get here. We lost the coin flip, and our opponent chose to go first. Depending on what he's playing, we won or lost. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Uh... Bistio Luber was nowhere to be found in that Blue Eyes matchup. It would have been crazy. But now it happens. What can you do? You can't expect to draw your one ofs when you're playing a deck full of random stuff that counters random stuff, you know? He's playing... Depending on if this is pure Tenyi or... I imagine it's probably not going to be pure Tenyi. I imagine it's probably going to be a certain, a certain deck called Sword Soul. And if it is Swords we probably lose. So the second I see a Moe, I'm getting out of here because I, I can't like I, I can't beat that. I just not with this hand anyway. 
and not going second i, I can't beat it uh a luber does nothing okay this is this is looking promising this is where they set a card and then just change all right this is looking more promising this is looking like a beatable hand this steal a luber it's probably the best summon we have uh, it's not we don't have to save it because he's not going to summon any dragons. Hopefully he gets scared. Thanks for playing uh, Fallen of Valbaz and Scoops Perfect waste your maxi because we are definitely not going to be special summoning <laughs> Enter the battle phase And we're gonna attack over the monk of the Tenyi And that's it he can bounce our monster next turn if he wants to our hand is well, I'd say okay, I mean it's not the worst hand it's not the best again it just depends on i, I still don't know what he's i don't know if he's playing sword soul he's just playing tenyes or he's playing sword soul because it's a huge difference is he playing yang zings and and tenyes or is he playing sword soul sword soul the second we see a moe we we pack our things and we get out of here i think we pack our things and get out of here i am not beating i mean just for the challenge of it i'll stick around and i'll use the threading rule now but it, again, like if he goes into a Baron de Fleur, this duel is over. All right, he's going to bounce the Twister with his uh, Vishuda, which is fine. Which is fine. Because Vishuda is, you know, whatever. Yeah, the Twister wasn't really doing anything for us anyway, so it's fine. Because uh, he doesn't have any face-up cards anyway. Face-up uh, spawn trap cards regardless. He, they do play... Uh, I believe they have a field spell, but they don't. Uh, no one plays it. It's only good in like the, the the mirror match. We've got some cool stuff. We have the Omni Dragon Brotar. So if our monster dies, we can search another card if we want to, or we can just summon it on to the field, uh, which we can also do. And the next turn, we can go into the Lear Lusk if we need to. That is actually the card I didn't want him to summon, honestly, because. Uh, yeah, I didn't want him to summon this thing because this thing protects itself, unfortunately. So, and then it banishes things. This card is much more dangerous against us than than uh, Baron de Fleur. Because Baron de Fleur, you know, if we get rid of the one negate, we can deal with it. But unfortunately, this this sovereign dude is is a little tough. I'm not gonna lie. He's just gonna not attack, which is good for us. I don't know why he decided to do that power frame we have essentially multiple cards that do the same thing we have unbreakable spear and we have this we have we can go into the extra deck we can go into extra we can go into the sioux ship and then we can use the unbreakable spirit with the sioux ship the problem is this affects not once per turn like the protection affects not not once per turn so if it would be destroyed by oh this is only destroyed by card effect you can banish one card from your graveyard instead so if this would be destroyed by battle then i guess we're good I guess I'll just kind of summon another monster to kind of like swarm the field. So if he attacks us, then we're good. Or if we attack him, then we're good. Imperm on this monster. Okay. I'm going to cancel. Nothing to do there. So this only works when we have one face-up monster, not multiple. So I guess now we go into the uh, the Sioux ship then. Or the Parallel Exceed. Let me just read everything through here right now. Okay. So, okay, okay. We're fine then. Okay, so this is what I think we do. We can actually make this to the Evil Swarm Nightmare because anything he special summons we can put face down. But that thing's not really all that great. We can go into this to get some some more stuff. We can go into the Sioux Ship. We can go into the Parallel Exceed. All of these are decent options. Even this Magic Key is good because I guess he'll let us search the Curse of Dragon and just kind of get some resources. That way Brotar can actually have something to discard. We can also go into that. Uh, we can go into Sue Ship. I think Sue Ship's pretty good here. I don't think he has any good thing. Uh, he has a Vishuda for next turn if he needs to uh, do something there. Honestly, Parallel Exceed's looking like the best one right now. And this is good, too, because it's like for 2,000, we get to search a card and have like some better card advantage. We have nothing to pop with Sioux Ship right now. And then we can make this, but if he gets to a normal monster, you can just like bounce this to the hand and he gets nothing out of it. Also, this card's attack is really weak, but it can book his monsters, which is cool. Um, I mean, I guess, I guess we go into this just because this will give us a... Uh, 
it'll give us a free a free card to search and keep our card advantage up which is probably best yeah we want the card advantage so we'll detach this and then search if our opponent has ash by all means by all means waste your last card <laughs> and that's fine it's probably best that we did that because now we can't get ashed on the next effect which is good and now we activate unbreakable spirit and he can't protect against uh he cannot protect against this because it's only by card effect i read the card i had to make sure i had to make sure whoops i almost missed what would that have attacked so then we out the the supreme sovereign main phase two hit the power frame hit the twister back face down and then i think we just pass and we baited an ash so pretty good there the good thing is, as long we actually don't, we he can even if he draws Moe, I think he needs to reveal for Moe, so I think that would be okay. Uh, he we don't want him to draw a Tenny because a Tenny would get him to a normal monster. Okay, that's fine. Awesome, awesome. Parry Knights does nothing at the moment, so we got it. We got to wrap this up, but we really can't do anything right now. Ugh, if we had something to do with this, we just enter the battle here. And then just, uh, like I said, there's an argument that we could have, there's a lot of cards that we could have made, right? Like we could have made the Wee Witch Apprentice. We could have made, there's a lot of cards we could have made in that situation and they all would have been half decent. Now the good thing is this did bait an Ash and that may end up being the difference. Okay, that's really, is that enough? 33. It's just barely not enough, man. That is just barely not enough. Because this is 1,200 and it leaves him at that much. And we don't have any generic things that we can go into. I mean, I guess we have to, right? I mean, we have to do as much damage as we can. We summon Brotar in defense mode. Um, do we act? Is there anything we can special summon with Brotar? What can we search with Brotar? We can get an Earth Warrior. We can get a Water that's irrelevant. But we can get a Dark Dragon, which is like Vice Dragon. We can get an Earth Warrior. Does that help? No. Actually, is this... Oh! Our opponent scooped while I was reading. Perfect. Okay. Good enough. We actually legitimately just beat Sword Soul. That was like... Like, yeah, this is like, you know, maybe subpar plays on the Sword Soul. But honestly, I don't even think he made subpar plays, if I'm being completely honest. I think he made legitimate... Other than that Imperm... His plays were actually quite reasonable, so we actually legitimately just beat Sword Soul, and we didn't even use a Floodgate. We just straight up beat them. Uh, that is pretty impressive. That is probably the best win of today. Like, I'm, that's the win I'm most proud of. We leveled up, and we got, um, what is this? We got a Legacy Ticket, but one Legacy Ticket. It doesn't really matter how many Legacy Tickets you, pull, you get. It's just the amount, it's the pulls that matter, not the amount of Legacy Tickets. I'm going to try to be very careful not to click anything but the pack so that anything but the card so we can actually i'm going to click right in the middle light of destruction okay so this this i don't really see how this could help us the sanctuary in the sky didn't we pull a card that oh we did pull a card that works with sanctuary in the sky we actually pulled uh one of the counter fairy cards, I, the one that pops a card of Sanctuary card of the of, of the sky is on the field, but it requires us to use counter traps. Uh, Sylvan, I don't think that this card is usable. If this card is sent from field or hand to graveyard, excavate. We don't really need to excavate, and then it does things if you if if it sends a plant. Uh, but we don't have a lot of plants right now. Megalo Smashers are straight up good. This is a good card. Uh, it's definitely going in like the we have a lot of good stuff cards in our deck. Deck like the the just just good card deck. But this is unfortunately not going in the uh, Dragon Warrior deck. Obviously, it's a dinosaur, but that's a good card to pull. Um, Black Luster Ritual, okay, I'll accept it. A Gishki Monster. This card's not bad, but I I can't I don't know the inf enough information on our opponent's decks to hand loop them. Uh, this is the Monarch. It actually isn't too bad. Uh, just doesn't really work with our deck. Now, let's see what the super is. Fingers crossed. Something good. Uh, this is Neptune, which is an agent, which goes with Sanctuary in the Sky, which we just pulled, which is a lot going on there. Okay, funny enough, this actually searches the Sanctuary in the Sky that we just pulled, uh, but we don't have any of the other cards needed to really use that. 
Mega Wolf Smasher is an awesome pull. This is going in our like main main deck. This is definitely going in there. Uh, but other than that, all of these pulls are very like uh, really are contingent on us pulling other stuff that is helpful. All right, let's open this one legacy ticket. Like I said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have ten legacy tickets or one legacy ticket. It only takes one card to really make a difference. Uh, this is a specific response just to Monster Reborn, so we're not playing it. And this is a uh, Performer Pal card. All right, this card is just not really that good, but it is searchable with all that Reptile support that we got. Uh, its scale is low. I mean, at least that's good. All right, we just lost a coin flip. We're going second, depending on what our opponent's playing. If it actually is pearly, uh, we're gonna we're gonna pack our our belongings and and wrap it up here. He's playing Math Mech. I don't think that we can beat this deck. <laughs> Not with the hand we have. But him link making a link one right here is somewhat promising, I'll tell you that. Parallel exceed. Let's see where this is already off to a weird start. The thing is he's got a lot of material. Honestly, I, I think we, we wrap this one up. He's about to go into the math mech probably rank four and then he just searches a math mech and i think he just goes from there he's going into probably diameter or uh, alan burshan and then alan burshan going to search diameter or uh, the other one circular either way two very strong cards circular there we go circular is a ur it's a common in the tcg And I, I think this is where we, we scoop this one up. Because now he has access to everything. And he, our trap is dead because of the Lingariba. No longer. Yeah, I'm going to scoot up, scoop it up. He's got Transcode. He's going to go into that Firewall Giant Link monster. I, and we're not going to win this one. Alright, we just won the coin flip. We're going first. Our hand is just okay. Our hand is just okay. I think that we, I mean, we have Marauding Captain and we have Expendable Die and we have the Thrill Ride. So we definitely can protect our life points, draw cards, stuff like that. Our opponent has a Chinese name, which could mean he's playing Self Decay. He has three cards in his extra deck. Could mean he's playing Self Decay. It could mean that we're just uh, going to get a free win here, which honestly, at this point, I don't even want like Self Decay wins. Uh, because I'd rather like you know actually play. I'd rather just play against the deck that is subpar than play against self DK. What can we summon? Oh, we're in this position a lot, where I can summon Zeta, but I kind of want to use Expendable Die. So like I'm I'm stuck between like which one do I do? Zeta is good, but the problem Expendable Die is good if we just draw any other warrior, then we can just use it. Right, so we can like normal summon no uh the Joan and then go from there but i guess like last time i didn't make this and it was and it was the wrong play not to make it so i'm going to go ahead and make it this time uh because it was the incorrect play last time so i'm just going to go ahead and make it and see how this goes and it obviously makes the uh the expendable die dead for this turn but i guess it's fine and then we've got of course the amazement thrill ride which can also banish a monster temporarily move it into we have two cards that can actually banish monsters and move them out of the way temporarily uh, interesting to see and then of course we've got the uh expendable die so if we draw any warrior which we're playing like probably like nine or ten warriors so if we draw any number of them we can go off from there and it is kind of cool that that this dude is a, a tuner of the fallen of albaz monster it'd be nice to pull a level eight synchro monster because that way if we pull a level eight synchro monster we can go into uh level eight synchros for obviously uh because it's a level four and it's a tuner and then we have a ton of level fours in our deck so that's pretty nice uh, he's gonna end here fine by me like i said i i, I could have kept the uh marauding captain and then tribute it pop a card right now probably would have been a nice play again it, it looks like it's probably self dk because again chinese letters the the uh sheep like, it looks like it's self-decay, but at the same time, you know, it could be... And the fact that they're taking a long time. Uh, but at the same time, it could be Labyrinth, and we're just, you know, we're just screwed. And I guess we'll find out right now. Gagaga Magician. Did I add that rank 7? I don't think I added that rank 7. 
yeah i forgot i didn't add the rank seven because i our extra deck space is actually like kind of getting tight <laughs> which is uh interesting so i might actually end up put cutting this claw of hermos we still have not drawn claw of hermos like right now claw of hermos would have been fire because i would have activated claw of hermos uh sent this to the graveyard attached claw of hermos to this thing and it would have attacked twice that would have been awesome uh but right now i think we're just going to summon gaga Ga magician and we're just going to go to battle He is playing self DK. Uh, we are going to just, I'm um, just going to attack and hopefully they burn themselves to death. And that's it. We just won another one. Self DK, nothing we could do about it. I'm not the one that brings them here. They're the ones who bring themselves here. All right, we've got two legacy packs. All right, here we go. We got our one legacy or the one master pack, I should say. Uh, we get super errors. We get, we've been getting a lot of super errors, but like they always are in this spot or this spot. You ever notice that? Make sure to click on the right spots. This is generic, I think. Yeah, this is totally generic. All right, so this is just a generic synchro that is a level six. I'm more than likely going to be playing this card. Uh, it's interesting because if it's tributed and sent to the graveyard, we can special summon this card back. So if it's tributed for like Amazonas or one of the Heratic effects or something like that, if it's tributed for essentially any reason, um, it is a spellcaster, so unfortunately we can't tribute it for like, you know, like an expendable die or like the dragon card or something like that but if it's tributed for any other reason like whatsoever you get the special summon it back for free it can also um return an altergeist monster to the hand and then negate an attack uh, so i imagine it can return itself so this is a playable generic synchro element to hero storm neos is a good card but we are absolutely not summoning it with the cards that we have uh Trickstar live stage. We do have some Trickstar cards, but I don't think that they're going to be usable uh, in combination with what we have right now. The Ledger Book. Okay, so this card is interesting, but I think we actually already pulled this and we've decided previously not to play it. Oh, no, we didn't. So basically, yeah, it targets two monsters, banish them until the end phase, and then your opponent gains for each monster. It can move things out of the way, but I don't think it's actually that good. It has our Arch Nemesis Luster Dragon on it, though already makes me not want to play it danger ogopogo is a good card in theory but unfortunately i don't think that we play this quite yet um, we just don't have enough stuff in our deck that can benefit from getting sent to the graveyard and then this is a weak danger because it's only 1200 attack it's got decent defense 1200 attack only it does special summon itself it may draw us a card uh, but the issue is we don't have like any rank eights or payoff for it whatsoever. We just kind of drop this big monster. This is actually good, but again, it needs a fiend monster to have it in play. Uh, so this is actually good, you know, toward like both of these cards are good if we were building a dark world deck. But as of right now, they're just not really super usable. Uh, Machine Angel Ritual. I think we've already pulled the other Machine Angel Ritual, and let's see what our super rare is. Marinces Dive which is a decent card, like not even decent, this is a good Marincess card. It's probably a, like one of the better Marincess cards, one of the best Marincess cards. Uh, we don't have enough Marincess to make it playable. So none of these cards are playable really right now. I'm probably gonna play the Altergeist monster right now. It is actually usable right now, right right here, right now. This card is usable. Um, Danger Ogopogo is, like I said, a little iffy. And then the catalyzer is we need more fiends so right now altergeist is the only playable card all right let's see these legacy tickets let's see what we pull these fake ass glowing cards let's see what we get here we've got helios trace medius not really usable for us interplanetary beast Okay, so basically what this card does is it's a level 5 monster, which is already not good. But if a monster we control is destroyed by battle, if the, this card's in the graveyard, it special summons itself back. Um, it's just kind of slow, honestly. And we have to get a level 5 monster in the graveyard. It's not like we have a ton of discard fodder cards. Um, other than, like, we have Danger Ogo Pogo now, and we have, like, uh, back to square one. But for the most part, we actually don't have a lot of discard fodder. Like, it's cool that it summons itself back. It's cool that it's level 5, but... Obviously, it's no Cyber Dragon, so unfortunately, it's it's just not playable right now. Let's see what this is. Zero. Okay, so this works only with our, a certain monster named Vijom. Other than that, it doesn't work with any card in our deck. And this is a self DK card. Uh, so I guess if we ever choose to play self DK, we can run that. 
All right, we just lost a coin flip against our opponent here. Uh, they chose to go first. All right, they are playing what seems like a very, very annoying runic deck, but I don't, I don't think we're gonna win this duel if I'm being totally 1,000% honest. But our deck is again we draw Curse of Dragon in this exact spot. I'm telling you, I don't know why. Every time we draw this card, it's always in this spot. There's something here. Something's not right. All right, let's see what we're going to be able to do here. They're playing, it seems like some sort of runic stun deck. Now, fortunately, stun decks aren't super good against our deck, which doesn't do a whole lot of anything. So we're going to special summon, or normal summon that, and then just try to go right to battle phase. See if our opponent has anything for us. I mean, I mean obviously, he's got runic cards, so he has tons of things for us. There can only be one, bro. That goes in match. Okay, that doesn't stop us. That doesn't stop us. I'd play those if I had them. So he's going to play those two. Just fine with me. Let's see what else he plays. If he has anything else to play. Unfortunately, Big Bang Shot doesn't really do much of anything for us right now. That's fine. Let's go to battle phase. Let's attack. See if this goes through. First blood. Here we go. All right. Main phase two. We're going to set the expendable die over here. Dragon Maid Titan. I'm going to set just in case. Why not? Let's set it. Uh, this target a dragon you control, so it has to be a face-up dragon. Unfortunately, it would be cool if it was the other the cata the the dragon cataclysm card instead. I wish it was that card, because then we could just set a dragon. I'm talking about the where is it? Guard dragon cataclysm. It would be nice if it was that card, because then I could just set any dragon and then just tribute it, pop two cards. But right now, our opponent is essentially playing the same deck we are. Uh, this is a lot of special summon a runic monster, which again is probably fine. Unfortunately, it's going to be Hugin. He's going to get out the uh, he's going to get out the the field spell, which is annoying. Uh, I really don't have a response to that. So, and it also um, he can use the effect of uh, I'm going to go ahead and on activation uh, use the expendable die, and I'm going to tribute the Gagaga. Um, and I'm going to target this. He's going to be able to protect it with the Hugin, but essentially um, we'll out the Hugin. So we'll get rid of Hugin, if anything, if he decides to protect that card. Oh, he's going to let it go through. That's fine. Okay, perfect. Oh, never mind. He's not going to let it go through, which is exactly what we thought. And then since the card didn't get destroyed, we don't get the draw. But, I mean, I don't know how many like cards he has down there. What does this one do? This will let him special summon another monster from the extra deck. Kind of sucks for us. I do all this, and he's going to be able to draw. I, I don't. I don't think we win this duel, but the Hugin protecting is really kind of annoying. He's going to add a runic card. Yeah, I think. I think we lose this duel. Uh, what's what is cool is that these floodgates literally do nothing against this. Uh, I would literally play them myself if I could. Oh no, not Claw of Hermos. Not Claw of Hermos. And now I think this is where we lose the duel. The gar. The heretic nut. Let's see, we're going to activate, th summon this, and we're going to attach it with Big Bang Shot, and we're going to go in for some damage. And since this was targeted, I have a mandatory effect, but I can't special summon because uh, Curse of Dragon is a dragon. So, despite the fact that that activated, we can't do anything about it. So, I guess we just attack, do 21 damage, just pass here, he gets sent, he gets returned to the extra deck, and then we just pass. Our deck is so bad. So he's going to be able to summon a runic because he can't destroy our monster because our monster's not special summoned. Our, our deck is so terrible. And he actually misses the next battle phase, which is nice too. Our deck is so bad that we can't... Uh, it actually does nothing against him, which is kind of incredible. Like, like all of his floodgates do nothing against our deck, which is like just crazy. Now what sucks is since we... Uh, have big bang shot on our heretic monster if he pops a big bang shot with the spawn trap card removal card um it uh it actually prevents it actually banishes our monster which is unfortunate for us okay so we can tribute summon i guess we can tribute tribute set tribute and then we can just set okay so i think we just attack into jerry and then when jerry's destroyed he can destroy a card not a problem but it will do some damage which is important let's go to battle all right, let's attack the Jerry, do some damage. 21 isn't too bad. Jerry's going to be able to pop a card, unfortunately, which is probably going to be our dragon here. Uh, our effect is just going to fizzle anyway because 
We literally can't under goes and match do any of this stuff that we want to do uh, main phase two we can summon this but yeah it doesn't really help so i think we just we just pass here he's at 2000 life points which is nice but unfortunately i think i think our lucks run out here because i don't know how we're even going to inflict more damage than what we've inflicted right now i have no idea how we're going to inflict the rest of this life points uh, continue to main phase. No, there's no point. Yeah, I don't even know how we're going to be able to inflict the rest of this inspector border. Like, literally, it's funny. It's like none of that stuff does a th damn thing against us. But we just, um, yeah, I don't know what we're going to do. Like, I, I, I legitimately don't know. Because we don't really have another way to really inflict life points to our opponent. That doesn't help us at all, being that we have the card in hand. I don't want to lock myself, so... Yes, we just summon this and go to battle. Probably best. So neither of us can declare attacks except for Synchro Monster. And that really sucks. Because I don't see us summoning a Synchro Monster under this. I guess we just passed. Nothing we could do. And Hugin can actually protect this card. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I don't think we're winning this duel. And if we do win this duel, it's going to take us forever. And this seems like the type of person that enjoys wasting our time. What do we have banished? So we have this as one of our outs that's banished. And I don't think that we win this duel, unfortunately. That's a decent card, but it just doesn't help us right now because we literally can't can't special summon it. That would be an out to a lot of things, but we can't special summon it under Gozen, and, and there can only be one. So I guess we can tribute set. Okay, we can tribute set and we can do some stuff here. This stupid Hugin can protect, which is annoying. All right, yes, let's tribute set. Yeah, the only monster we can summon is the, is the one that we... <laughs> is literally the monster that we have, so we can't do anything there. Now we can summon this. Now the question is, what do we pop with this? Which is, we can pop the Synchro Zone, which will allow us to attack again. We can also pop the Gozen Match. Well, well the there can only be one, but that'll allow us to summon dragons. But he probably, let's be honest, probably has another one. So I think we pop the Synchro Zone. You're going to be able to destroy our Special Summon card. And this doesn't get destroyed. Alright, I think that is probably our last out in the deck. There can only be one doesn't help. This doesn't help. Uh, this we don't really help us. Back to square one doesn't really help us. Because we still can't attack. That is every out in our deck. There's nothing that we can do. We essentially have lost the duel. That sucks. That was, that was just... Uh, we lost. Nothing we could do. Nothing we could do. All right. So we just, again, Curse of Dragon in this spot. Bro, what is up with this? Every time we draw him, he's right here. This, this is like, what, 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 like, every single time we always, like, it's not that we draw him a lot. Like, I get that. Shit happens. But, like, why is he always in this spot when we draw him? That's so weird. Like, of all the places for him to be, it's always in that exact same spot. Our hand is um, kind of terrible, if I'm being honest. I guess we set this and set the expendable die. That hand is really rough. And then we got just three bricks in our hands. In our hand. Yeah, there's something about this Curse of Dragon. We see him... Well, number one, we see him too much. But other than us just seeing him too much, it's it's the weirdness of seeing him in this exact spot every single time. The other thing, honestly, he's kind of just like a brick that... He doesn't come up as often as I would like for him to come up. All right, so we're playing against self DK. All right, that's the game. Another self DK. Again, I don't... This isn't who I want to play against, but it is what it is. Sometimes you do have to play against self DK. It's a part of the game. Uh, we got one legacy ticket. Uh, this is going to be the last pack that we opened. The episode's already getting really, really, really long. So I'm going to go ahead and end it after this pack. I didn't want to end on a self DK. That's generally what I don't try to do that, but it's whatever. Uh, so let's open it up. Last legacy pack. It seems to be a super. I'm not excited because we've gotten a lot of supers. They've all been kind of lackluster. Uh, this is a Umi card, which does not help us right now. Um, this is Barry Magician Girl. It doesn't really help us because we don't have the other Magician Girls. Not that I would play it anywhere. Um, this doesn't really help us right now because we don't have the other monsters. Labyrinth, the uh, monster lets us set a Labyrinth card from our deck. I don't know if we have one. I got to look back at stuff, but I think we pulled a Labyrinth card, but it was like a spell card, but it wasn't like a good one. Another Tremid card. We pulled two of the Trap card, and now we pulled one of the Fortress. Fortress is the defensive field spell. Um, this is a Ritual Beast card, a Ritual Beast Tamer. 
I don't think that this is really usable for us right now. You can uh, target a ritual beast monster in the graveyard, special summon it, but we don't have any. So right now it's kind of a dead card. Cybernetic Revolution is a decent card. Uh, because it lets you tribute a cyber dragon special summon fusion monster from an extra deck that lists cyber dragon's material cannot attack and destroy during the end phase uh, Not a bad card, but I would need to pull number one a cyber dragon number two a card that like Works with cyber dragon in order to use this and then for our super rare. It is the new shadow ghoul uh, Which is kind of cool, but we don't have all of the other stuff for this We can add a labyrinth wall card from our deck to our hand by discarding this card and at the start of damage step, if your opponent battles while you control a labyrinth wall, you can banish card from the grave or destroy that opponent's monster. This is a cool, like, one card combo that I would 1000% play if we had. I, I believe we want uh, the labyrinth wall field spell. So if we pull the labyrinth wall field spell, I'll probably play this card because you can. Discard this, search that, and then that has decent effects. And on top of that having decent effects, uh, we can just banish this out of the graveyard and destroy an attacking monster. So possibly for all of this stuff is for the future, nothing for today. And let's see for these legacy tickets. Two cards, Gladiator Return. We have Gladiator cards, but I don't know if that's totally usable right now. And Steel Shell. So this works with three Gladiator Beast cards in our graveyard. I think we only have three Gladiator Beast monsters total. So I don't think that's really usable. And then the Steel Shell is just not good. La 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 la